for the clarity and closure of the viewers' comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. Also, I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Please don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. And if you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or chords or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it if you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about. It's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that on the spot. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to extend to you a warm welcome to this edition of For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewer's Comments. As a special treat, I'm going to address a comment that I get maybe once every few weeks. And the comment usually has to do with apps and AI. And it usually goes something like this. Jason, have you ever thought about developing an application that will syntax the fiction for uh, a client? Like get an app that you can put on your phone and then you can paste in a sentence and it will syntax it for you. Or conversely, an app that if you speak a plain English sentence into the app, the app will translate the plain English sentence into quantum grammar. They ask, have you thought about this? Well, of course. I thought about it many years ago when I first started. And I soon realized, the more closure I got on the grammar, how unlikely such a thing would be. As far as syntaxing goes, AI just can't seem to tell the difference between what a tangible contract word and what a non-tangible contract word is, or more accurately, what a tangible condition of state is versus a non-tangible condition of state. Now, eventually, sometime in the future, it may be able to do so by rote, but as for right now, it doesn't seem to be able to do that. And as far as translating to correct sentence structure, you know, translating a plain English sentence into a correct sentence structure, that hasn't been able to be done either. Because there's no AI that can really use grammar as a mathematical interface the way it's presented with correct sentence structure. And I'm going to show you proof of that right now. Uh, this, what you see on your screen right here, called the Quantum Translator. I'm not sure when it was created. I know that I saw it back in 2017. And I'm going to show you who created it um, as I go to this next web page. This individual over here, colon Tyshawn hyphen Lemarcus, colon Dispenza, created it. Now, first of all, you have to be able to use and be conversant in correct sentence structure in order to create an app that would also be able to create correct sentence structure. That's logic, right? So if the creator of the app does not have closure on the grammar, then how can they expect to create an app that has closure on the grammar. Let's take a look at Tyshawn's name right here, shall we? Now I've noticed this on this website I just looked at. I see colons, now they're tied up against the first letter of the names, whereas before there was a space there. So I think uh, that guy over there on the other side has been watching some of my videos, or at least his webmaster has, and they're correcting some of the mistakes that I've been pointing out. Wink, wink. No thanks needed, gentlemen. But let's look at the name. Colon Tyshawn hyphen Lamarcus colon Dispenza. Do you see what's going on here in Lamarcus? This is a violation of rule one, rule equal. As the man on the left once told me, 
because at one point in time, ladies and gentlemen, my name, Colin Jason Ivan Matthew, I did not capitalize the M in Matthew. It was uppercase J and Jason, and then lowercase, and then hyphen lowercase Matthew with the M. And Russell pointed out to me that that's a violation of rule one, rule equal. That what happens on one side of the hyphen has to happen on the other side of the hyphen. Well, I mean, that's the conclusion I came to. He didn't explain it quite like that. He didn't explain it at all. He just told me I was wrong, and I was kind of left to figure it out for myself, which I did. And so that's why I say that this, Lamarcus, the way it's written, is a violation of rule one, rule equal, because the M is capitalized. Why wouldn't the S also be capitalized over here? Or here? So in order for this name to be written correctly, the M in Lamarcus would have to be lowercase. Okay? Also, we see colon web hyphen master and then a colon there. A colon is a position lodial phrase that's supposed to position a fact, but there is no fact after webmaster. It's what I call a dangling participle colon. So this is more evidence that Taishan probably doesn't have closure on the grammar. Now let's go look at his web page again. Colon space Q hyphen T period. If QT is supposed to be an abbreviation of quantum translator, then the Q must needs have a period and then the hyphen T period. Q period hyphen T period. That is a correct abbreviation. And not only that, the colon must be tied up against the Q, but it's not. You see there's a space there, so that means of the, so that is a violation of the mathematical interface of correct sentence structure. Same thing here, colon space quantum hyphen translator, and then there's not even a full stop after the R. And then, oh my goodness, what is this? Colon space for the simplying. What is S-I-M-P-L-Y for the simplying? What is a simplying? Do you know what a simp is? Do you know what lying is? Is he saying that there's a simp that's lying? Well, anyways, never mind the particle of negation ing, never mind the particle of negation ly. Let's look at the beginning of the sentence. It says colon space for the. That basically says of the for the. Of the for the simp lying, of the translating documents, document storage, and of the client document management. Makes absolutely no sense. And so there's really no need in going through the rest of it because it's more of the same. And now let's head over to the web page of which he is the webmaster of. For the majority of the people are with lack. All right, so we're missing a lodial here. It should be with the lack or with a lack. In any case, there must be a lodial. There is no lodial, so therefore it throws the whole sentence into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. Of the motivation, with the living life, on their terms, on their terms, on. What kind of a uh, positional is on? When you read that backwards, what's that say? Off their terms of the living life. Makes absolutely no sense. So now perhaps you can see why a quantum translator would not work, especially if the creator of the quantum translator does not have closure on the grammar. Bottom line, folks, you need to get closure on the grammar. You need to have a strong foundation of the grammar before you can do anything with it. So now let's get into the comments. First one comes from Quaylen James, and they say, this is great. I actually learned something for the first time. Well, congratulations there, James. If this is the first time you've ever learned anything in life, well, congratulations. I'm very happy for you for learning something for the first time. I hope from now on you continue to learn things as opposed to before you learned something from the first time and you hadn't learned anything. I mean, I don't know how old you are or how far along in life you are, but congratulations on your first time uh, learning something. What kind of dictionary would you recommend acquiring or any other material for reference? Thanks. 
Well, you can use any dictionary that you can find online, any commonly used dictionary by anybody else on planet Earth, rule one, rule equal. Uh, Webster's 1828, you can use Google. Google has its own dictionary. You can use an etymology online dictionary, Funk and Wagnalls, all sorts of dictionaries. It just It's up to you uh, to put the legwork in and uh, search them out. Next comment comes from Anthony Wright. He says, I want to start from the begging. Where should I start? First, Anthony, thank you very much for your membership. Uh, second, um, it's my experience that it's, it's, it's never any good to just begging, to start with begging. Begging is sort of the same as pleading, and that's what happens in fiction courts. People go in and they enter pleas. They're basically begging. And what you said here is you want to start from the begging. I recommend not starting from begging. I recommend that you start from whatever point in the now space you find yourself comfortable with. Uh, click on a video and start watching and go from there. Uh, to be specific, you can look at the playlist. I don't know how far or how well you have investigated this channel. Um, I always recommend people do their own research. Look at the playlists. The mini class playlist would be very helpful for the beginner because it gives them an overview of pretty much every facet of correct sentence structure. Next comment comes from by beneficiary colon something. And they say Pensacola Beach native. And I my Kuliana back was my wife and I love to travel. That's one of our favorite locations to visit. If we return there, you may want to apply for a one-on-one -on -one in-person class or two if you're interested. And I give my email address. And that's the reason why I posted this comment because this is something that I am perfectly willing to do and I have done before. I do in-person teaching sessions. Um, if I'm going to be in your local area and you know I'm going to be there, hit me up at my email and apply for a workshop and I will come to a mutual beneficial location, whether it's to your domicile or some other neutral location, and I'll give you an hour workshop or two. Um, you just have to apply for it first. JasonMatthewG17 at gmail.com, and I may be teaching you in person. Next comment comes from Jeff Baird, and they said, Robert Michael, House of Marcus. And then Colin David Eiffelwin, Colin Miller, Bill Faust, Tim Turner, Yusuf, John Keating. All, all teaching fictional interactions through contract. Everything is contract, Jeff. Whether it's fictional or fact. Everything is contract. Whether it is uh, through gestures, handshakes, verbalization. Everything is contract. What they all lack is what you teach. I'm guessing that Jeff means correct sentence structure. Now, I'm familiar, of course, with David Wynn Miller. I've heard of Bill Faust. Don't know who Tim Turner is. Yusuf, not real familiar with that. And John Keating is, uh, I think there was a John Keats poet from a long time ago. And also the Tim Turner, I believe there was a cartoon about Timmy Turner called Fairly Odd Parents, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm not sure who the other people are. The contract could be written perfectly. Without correct grammar, a judge will have a free reign to shred a contract apart. Well, again, this is coming, I feel, from a fiction vantage point. Why are you giving a judge authority over you, Jeff? Why are you giving a judge an authority to rip your contract apart? If you use correct sentence structure, if you choose to learn it and get closure on it, there is no judge that can have authority over you. Authority comes from knowledge, and contract is by consent. I know, cart before the horse, I never was interested in philosophy because, in my opinion, there is no practical use. Well, the practical use of philosophy is, well, what is philosophy? Isn't philosophy basically just speculation on the reasons why we're here? I mean, who doesn't want to know why we're here? I've always wondered why we're here, what the purpose is. It's a great mystery, isn't it? And it is fun to speculate. But if you find no value in it, you know the value of a thing is what you ascribe to it, and that's your own personal choice. Uh, but what I do recommend 
is learning this grammar because I think it will give you a slightly different take on the system than you currently exhibit in your comments. Another comment from Jeff Baird, and they say, sorry, not truth. Your correctness can be intimidating. Truth is an opinion. That is not correct. Truth is a fact. Truth is a fact that I have given closure to in my correct sentence structure code dictionary, which governs my construct. Truth has closure and a finite mean. When the judge asked to certify now time, I can't answer because David said so. Again, Jeff is putting himself in the jurisdiction of, under the authority of someone else, which is not necessary if he knows correct sentence structure. I mean, you may choose to put yourself in that position. I mean, you can give someone else authority if you choose to. Jeff, if you want to have a judge to have authority over you, then of course you would consent to it. But you don't have to if you know correct sentence structure. People attend collage for eight years and pay out 250000 to get the certification to become a doctor and live a comfortable life. You know what? I, I've known a lot of doctors and I don't really know one doctor that lives a comfortable life. They work crazy outrageous hours and um, most of them don't are not in very good health at least the ones that I know because they work so many hours you're providing a vehicle without a map to navigate and interact with the fictional world with success stories and example you're providing a vehicle without a map to navigate and interact with the fictional world with success stories and examples so is he saying that the vehicle are the success stories and examples and there's no map to navigate? Because in that context, there are almost 500 videos on this YouTube channel that could be considered the map to navigate uh, alongside the fiction using correct sentence structure. And I don't really tell very many success stories, actually. Um... I prefer not to. I prefer to focus on the grammar because hero stories are not the focus of this channel. There are plenty of other channels that that's all they do are tell tall tales without certification. Uh, my channel focuses on the grammar and that's where I like to keep it. And again, Jeff, if you want to get serious about this grammar, there's an email address down there that you can contact me at to begin your journey. Next comment comes from student uh, Cohen Spencer hyphen David hyphen Miller Cohen Fields and he says thanks Daryl thanks Jason great video of positive performance this helps correspond with the correct sentence structure communication and syntax parse grammar by the claimant or reader uh, thank you very much for this uh, sentiment Spencer and for the comment next comment comes from Mac One Juno and they say very good you might consider a course book just like the comment about the application like, I haven't heard this one before. You know, just about every couple weeks, someone says this one. It could be matched to prior videos or made book chapter videos. It could help more people and give you an additional income stream. Yes, it could. Yes, it could. I answered, I have addressed the book idea in past videos. I'm working on a book. However, it is a long process. It will not be a haphazard, cheap, laden text with mistakes. It will be correct and translated into English. As mentioned in said past videos, if any viewer wishes to help fund the finishing of said book, they may do so of their own volition and then contact me with an offer. Other than that, you'll have to wait until it's finished, which will probably be in a few more years. Yeah, exactly. Because the book is a lot of work. I've been working on it for two years, and it's nowhere near being done. Uh, but as I said in there, if any viewer wishes to help fund the finishing of the book, if they think it's that valuable then go ahead and, you know, contribute. Contribute to the value of the book and enable me to, to speed up the process. But every time I say that, everybody immediately, whoop, zips up and disappears. One thing I can tell you is that David Windmiller charged $200 for this book, okay? This book that had printed and, like, sort of, like, handwriting on there scribbling and uh you know in the margins and things like that my book will not be like that my book will probably be four or five times as thick as this it will be in correct grammar it will be translated into plain english 
and I can pretty much guarantee you that two hundred dollars won't even cover a tenth of it uh, by my estimation at the rate I'm going now with uh, the investment that I put into it. Next comment comes from colon James hyphen Matt. Thank you very much for your membership, James. And he says, for the claim of the gratitude is with the cognition of the loyalist member with the rule one and rule equal by the claimant space James hyphen Clifford of the Amat. Now he's using or attempting to use the quantum shorthand system that Colin Raven and I developed a few years ago where there is a specific sequencing of positionals and if you honor that sequencing you can use colons through your whole sentence to represent position loadial phrases. Now he has used the colons correctly in this sentence however there is one error that throws his whole sentence into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. Can you see it? I'll tell you where it is. You see the word claimant? Claimant is followed by a space and then a name, James hyphen Clifford. Claimant has been positioned. James hyphen Clifford has not. So therefore, in order for this sentence to be correct, you would have to put a comma after the T in claimant, comma space James Clifford, or you could put a forward slash after the T in claimant, but you can't just leave it hanging there with just a space. Throws the whole thing into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. Hope that helps, James. Another comment from Jeff Baird, and he says, this is exactly what I was looking for. Oh, he's talking about talk show edition I did with my student Nathaniel. He says, I have property violations according to my neighbor, which has a great relationship with the county. So his neighbor's telling him that he has property violations. What's that mean, property violations? He tried three times to turn my alleged property violations to the county. All court cases dismissed using a quantum grammar. Letter. Offered a contract. Written in simple English in quantum grammar. Your student probably used the trust letter written by JD at UR Law as a guide. Actually, Jeff, I showed this to Nathaniel, and he said that what he did had nothing to do with any uh, trust letter or anything to do with JD, that what he did to be successful was he used strict, precise, and focused correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar. And it's also my experience from looking at JD's website or whatever his name is at UR Law that there is no correct sentence structure on that website. Um, the most that is on there is parse, and, and I did a video on this where there was like a master syntax class that was offered by UR Law. It was a video, but it had no syntaxing in it. It, it was just parse. There was no syntaxing. And actually, in the paid premium member section of this website, at least two years ago, I don't know if it's that way anymore, but they offer my free public videos in the paid member section to learn how to write correct sentence structure and do syntax, which is interesting. Charging money for my free videos is what it is. But long story short, no, Nathaniel did not use anything um, from UR Law to attribute to his excesses. It was all attributed to correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Wonderful grammar technology brought to us by Colin David Eiffelwin, Colin Miller, and which Nathaniel took workshops with me and achieved closure on. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me for this edition of For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewers' Comments. As always, if you feel squirrely and you feel motivated, and you want to learn the grammar, contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen and apply for a workshop. If you'd like to join the membership, hit the join button and click on it. You will see two tiers of membership. You click on each tier, you'll get information on each one. One of them offers exclusive content not available to the public. That about does it for now. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you in the next one.